Welcome to a Sergeant Indoors. <laughs> Welcome to a Sergeant Outdoors episode. Uh, it's not gonna be long, real quick. All we're doing, we got about 40 minutes of uh, daylight. We're just gonna throw some tip ups in and watch them from the truck. That's all I got going on. We had a very eventful weekend, but the camera was put away for all of it. So we're gonna, we're just gonna hang out here on a Sunday evening, see if we can't catch some northern or walleye. So I think I got us right on some stumps out to a flat, and we're gonna, we're gonna hang out. We're gonna, we're gonna hang out, so. She's just here so she don't get fined. Time is of the essence. We are all set up. We got three tip ups in from 12 feet to 14 feet. Well, it was like 13.9, but we'll call it 14 feet of water. And I'm jigging in 14 feet of water and just pulled a little crappie out. The fish are here. The little ones are biting. So let's hope we get a flag. I'm just gonna sit here and jig my heart away and hope that one of those flags go up. That's really what I came out here for, is the excitement of a tip up. Excitement of a tip up. Honey, are you gonna get a tip up if we catch one? Are you gonna pull it in? You gonna try yeah. it? Pick a tip up that way. If that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. That's how that's gonna go down. Oh, okay. Whoever gets to it first, that's gonna be. Oh, a that's good. You're not gonna first. say anything until you're over there? catch anything it's the next day now and uh but i didn't realize something while uh while i was at work today two things actually one a lot of you are asking about uh this floor so uh at the end of this video i'll i'll do a quick little rundown of it and why and how i built it uh and two thinking about wasting time now time is something that i've I, it, it, my biggest fear in life is time, but that's a whole another episode of therapy with Aaron or something. Um, but wasted time specifically. Not all wasted time is created equally. Pre-workout. You know, new year, new me. <laughs> Just kidding, but we do got to get in shape over here at the gym. Now, you got... Wasted time in general, you sit on your butt and watch TV all day. A uh, few things. One, you're not going to create a lifelong memory from that. Uh, you might enjoy yourself and have a good time. Or two, you can like do like we did and we uh, just got out on the lake. Now, we didn't catch anything. To a lot of people, that's wasted time, right? Makes sense. You know, your goal was to catch some fish and you didn't. But when you look at it a little bit deeper, it gets different. Wasted time is not created equal. You got wasted time like yesterday. Now, to most people, like I said, you didn't catch a fish, it's wasted time. But what we did do was talk. Talk about the future. We interacted. You interacted with another individual. So some of my best memories are wasting time. Um, road hunting. Some of you might know what that is, uh, the term, but you literally just, drive around looking for deer. It's not even that you uh, might kill anything because it's on private property. You're just gonna be driving around. And specifically, on some of these trips that I remember so vividly, we said like 20 words, me and my dad. But a few of those trips, we actually did kill something. And it made for some really long lasting memories. If you're a individual out there, kids, family members, something it only takes two hours to uh have the possibility to create a memory of a lifetime like last night we went with like 40 minutes left of sunlight drilled four holes 
but Marilyn could have caught her first walleye through the ice. I could have. And that would have been a lifelong memory. But we would have been, we were still just wasting time. Don't get me wrong. There's different versions of this where wasting time is just wasting time. If I would have went out yesterday by myself, not talked to anybody, just put some tip-ups in and didn't catch anything, that's pretty much a waste of time. Not gonna lie. I don't, I would have not learned anything new. I didn't bump into anybody to talk to. It would have been a legitimate waste of time. But we were able to get out together. So if you got kids, you got something like that, wasting time is worth it. Don't just think yourself out oh, it'd be too much work to go out, get set up, get fishing. By that time, we'll only be there for 30 minutes. Just go do it, man. Wasting time that way is much better than sitting inside the house watching TV or something. My two favorite ways of wasting time is travel. Not like, not like your destination, like you're traveling the world, but you're going on an hour car ride. That car ride can be some of the best wasted time in the world. And number two is going outside. Going outside is the best possible waste of time you can have in your life. Create lifelong memories, it can be healthier for you. Mid-sentence, but what I was saying was going outside is the best waste of time possible. So if you can do it, get in the outdoors, enjoy yourself. It doesn't matter what you do, just get outside, have some fun, take your kids with you, go fishing, do what you can because it's the best possible waste of time on the planet. And with all that said, and me on my soapbox rambling about life lessons and things, I will take you out to my floor after I smash this sandwich. And then finally, I know some of you guys in the comments asked about this floor and uh, how I did it and stuff. So as you can see, I have it open right now and the shack is laying in there. But there it is, that's the floor, right? So it's real simple design. Good enough. Whoa. This will be the easiest way to show you things. So, as you can see, I just used OSB. Good old OSB. Uh, and I split two by fours for all of, I guess you could call them skids, but they're also there for support because they sit on the ice. So you're not breaking this OSB here. So what I did was I started by getting my dimensions. I popped up my shack, I opened it up, I measured it corner to corner, decided how big this floor needed to be, and it also, slash, needed to fit in a Ford Focus at the time. So start there and get your base. If you recognize what this is, it was just the cheapest, it was just the cheapest plastic type thing I could find to make this slide in the snow easier. So I started with the wide side, the bottom side, and I put two skids on it to make it easier to pull through the snow. There's less resistance. Then I have a normal 2x4, and that is for the support where it splits right here. I was really worried about this chunk not having any support, and when you're sitting there with the chairs, it was going to be bending. So we put this 2x4 in, and when you open the, open the shack all the way, it sits perfectly on the ice with the other with the other legs. I can straighten this out there. See, this is perfectly flat on the ice. The middle is still supported. Puts less stress on these hinges, which are still they're still kind of bending out. There's there's that's the only wear that I've noticed. And then, obviously, put the holes there. I made these eight inches wide so that when I had an eight inch hole, it fit in there. Simple stuff, right? All right, and then the top. I just bought the cheapest carpet I could find. It didn't really matter what it was and then for the storage so this has these the as you can see I have a board on top and it's got a it's got a lip on the inside this is two reasons one when you fold it up it meets each other and it leaves room inside the shack to be able to pull it out on the lake and two you just support those hinges one there and one there without those hinges being in the way of dragging it out or once it's set up you know messing with the form or how it laid on the ice <clears throat> so that was the two reasons 
for these boards here. And then, I mean, it, it didn't need to, but it also just, as a bonus, helps hold the carpet in place. I staples, there's tons of staples in here, all around the edges and stuff. You can kind of see it right there. You see how there's a shadow, there's a staple there. Holding the edges on, but, so it's got a bonus of holding the carpet in place better. It leaves, so when you close it, there's more room for storage in between here. And also somewhere to put these hinges to which they are not messing with the slide or any function of the shack at all. So that's a breakdown of my floor that I use in my portable. I mean, it, it is really just simple stuff. It's just a square with some split two by fours on it. I, you know, the side I put the rope on, I made sure to angle with that plastic so it kind of rides on top of the snow. That was it, and then this plastic was real cheap. I bought one eight foot piece of this. God, I wish I knew the name of it. Just find yourself some really cheap plastic, because I started out without it on there and it was just the wood. Did not slide through the snow, did not slide on the ice at all. It was awful. So buy yourself some sort of plastic to put on those rails. And that's it. So I know a couple of you were wondering and asking about this floor that I had in the pop-up. Whoa. Now, I wasn't worried about longevity. I only wanted this to last like two or three years and I figured without using treated wood, it was gonna get rotted and wet. But I mean, it's been four years, I think four years now, and there's no signs of rotting from moisture at all. So that's just insane to me, but it works. It works really well. And the best part about it is my shack fits so perfectly over it that when you put the corners over the corner here, it holds the shack down. I don't have to worry about the wind blowing it away. I don't have to worry about screwing my pop-up down no matter how windy it gets. It's held down by a floor that I'm sitting in. <clears throat> so it's really handy. And then the great part about it is even though the string is only on this side, when the floor is all the way opened up and I just want to move like 20 feet, I can pull everything in my shack with the pop-up on it. I can just slide it across the ice nice and easy. So that's my floor. That's the breakdown. Uh, it's just nice and comfortable to not be having a heater sitting if there's snow on top of the ice with a pop-up turn the heater on it turns into a lake like that sucks uh, it's always annoying to me I'm always gonna pick comfort over number of fish when it comes to just doing it recreationally so you know I want to be comfortable I might be less I'm gonna be less mobile it's gonna be hampering on how much stuff I have to carry out on the lake but overall because I'm so comfortable my time on the lake is more enjoyable circling back to the wasted time it doubles as my sled and I don't have to worry about having a big plastic sled that's useless once you're on the lake uh, unless you got one with like the nice chairs you got a pop-up but those are three hundred four hundred dollars this total including if you bought that specific pop-up is only 150. You know, one of these ice fishing videos, I'm actually gonna catch some fish and show you guys, but you know, life happens, things get in the way, you know, you're not fishing even though you're in your lake a lot of times. That was kind of what happened this weekend. So we didn't, we didn't, we didn't end up fishing that much. So there's nothing to put on camera. You know, I wanted to at least get an episode made because I had no matter what, every week I need to get one out. That's my personal goal for this year, 2018. Um, is to make sure I'm making something for you guys. All 288 of you right now. Time check, 288, that's insane to me. I went from 30 subscribers to 200 way faster than I thought I would. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of your views. Um, make sure you comment any suggestions, ideas, questions down below. Um, go ahead and hit that dislike if you thought that this was gonna be a <laughs> fishing episode and it turned out to not really include any fish. Sorry to all of you out there who are that person. Um, but know that fishing is coming. Just uh, thanks for hanging in there this long of me just talking. I appreciate all of the views out there. Know that fishing is coming. Know that I absolutely want to get on Mille Lacs a couple times this year. That is a huge like, uh, premier lake in Minnesota. I really want to get on that a couple times this year. So just know better content and more fishing is coming. Just sometimes life gets in the way. So thank you all for sticking around. I appreciate every one of you, every last one of you. Comment, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll see you on the ice.